Good evening, everybody. Dr. Glow here with Black Girl Everything and happy Women's History Month. Yes, I'm so excited. So excited, right? Because Black Girl Everything supports Black women-owned businesses. Makes sense? Woohoo! All right, wonderful. So I'm here with two beautiful women today. Major entrepreneurs out here in the game. Very excited to have you guys. So I have Alicia and I have Brownette. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm super duper excited. So what we're going to do is have this conversation today really about you two, your organizations, what you do, what inspired you to do what you do, and talk a little bit about our retreat and everything else. So Alicia, I'm going to start with you. Can you please tell everybody the name of your business? Yeah. So hi, I'm Alicia Alfred. It's pronounced Alicia, not Alicia, like Alicia Keys. I tell that to everyone just because- My fault. <laughs> No worries, everyone does it. Um, my business is City Group Realty. Um, we focus on helping um, the average person uh, develop and uh, purchase their first investment property. Um, of course, second and third is always great, but we uh, believe in generational wealth. So um, I believe that everyone should have a second property, if not a third and a fourth. That's a winning strategy. I'm all for it. That's why I was happy when I was read about you earlier. I was like, oh, this is what she does for real, for real? This is so exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we do. And uh, so I personally manage and own, um, I focus on short-term rentals um, only because I think that's a winning strategy, Airbnb and VRBOs. Um, that's your most bang for your buck if, if you're in a, a city. I live in D.C., but uh, my properties are located in Washington, D.C., as well as Miami. Any major city it will work um, but uh, for, for short-term rentals. But Airbnbs is where it's at. And I, I just believe in the, the return on investment is, is great in that arena. So that's what I focus on. Cool, cool, cool. So, Brownette, tell everybody what's the name of your business. Um, my name is Brownette Cook, and the name of my business is Evans Electrical Services. I'm a, a union electrical contractor. I've been an electrician for 27 years. Um, and um, right now I have like a few projects going on, like Bronx Community College. We're, we're doing like file on upgrade systems. So I currently have six employees and um, getting on other work, you know. Also getting, you know, pre-qualified with all the different agencies like DASNY, uh, Nature, Port Authority, you know, the MW, MWBE. That's a whole, that's a whole other process. We're going to start with that. But um, so I'm just, you know, trying to grow my business responsibly. Okay. That's all dope. All dope. So you guys are both game changers. And I think you're, what you do kind of correlate in a line because you have properties and you fix properties. Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is that when electrical license, you have to be licensed in that jurisdiction. Like, so I'm licensed in the five okay. boroughs. I can't mm -hmm. work in Westchester. I can't work in Jersey unless I take home. Yeah, this week. Thing. This week. Yeah, this week. This week. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about it. That's right now. It's not forever. That's right now. That's right now. Don't so, you start. <laughs> Don't you start. <laughs> Right. Listen, right. you got to be able to be, able to be everywhere all the time, right? You should not right. limit ourselves. Got to be able to grow, right? Got to be able to grow. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, so, definitely. Definitely. So, guys, share with me, what were some of your inspirations for starting your business? Okay. Um, okay, Yeah, sure, I'll go. Um, so, uh, I will say uh, this is a male-dominated field. Um same way with her. I know okay. elect, uh, electricians are, I think I've only met one in this business. <laughs> um, so it's a male-dominated field. I think the first house I, I purchased and I just wanted the locks changed and this dude charged me at the time. So this is um, 1999. And so this dude charged me, you know, $75 per lock. And it was just like ridiculous. It's something that I'm like, wait a minute, I, I can do this, right? And so that's how, it's something that small, I just started changing locks and doors and then um, it, it just got, it just grew from there. So I think, um, and also ownership, you know, mm -hmm. um, when you're renting, they can tell you, they can kick you out. They can do so many things to you versus if you yeah. own. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I learned about, I had a seminar I went to when I was, I don't know, in my early 20s. And this this lady um, uh, had grew from 
purchasing homes to actual land. And she purchased 21 acres that she was selling to uh, a developer. I'm sorry, 121 acres that she was selling to a developer, just a portion of it, and carving out um, his plots which totaled, you know, she tripled her money per acre. And so uh, that alone told me how much um, land, the value of land and the value of, um, the value of land and also the value of, um, of property. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can vibe with that. Ronette, so what, what inspired you to actually start your business? Well, actually what inspired me to start my business was um, I come from a family of electricians. So it was like, you know, just, I want to be a master electrician. So I started to investigate what I had to do. And then I started on, started just started on the path while I was still working at the Javits. And also I was finishing up my bachelor's degree. And just one of those things is once I started, I just, just kept going I said, you know, I'm already here. I paid my money. I'm mm -hmm. quite sure that I can give me a refund. So I'm going to sit here. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, not, I'm never doing this class again. So I'm going to, I'm going to do the first time and I'm going to pass, <laughs> yeah. you know, because I'm yeah. it was very, it was like a, over a year experience. Mm -hmm. This is a whole year class and um, tests, different exams. But just for me being an electrician in general, I've always like working with my hands. I went to elect uh, electrical high school um, mm -hmm. and just with starting I had got my license in 2018, but like when the pandemic hit, I was a foreman at the Javis. I was the first, well, the only, the first African American female foreman, electrical show foreman they ever had. And I was just mm -hmm. kind of like, wow, someone had brought it brought that brought that to my attention. And I was like, really? You know, I'm like, why am I shocked? But it was like we're still saying, we still we're still saying this in, in 2000, you know, in, in 2019, actually. Yeah, but um, when the Javits closed due to the pandemic, you know, my mentor, uh, Veronica Rose, she's been in business for 27 years. She said, I'm like, you know, what am I going to do? She's like, what do you mean? What are you going to do? You have a license that you're not using. That's active mm -hmm. the Department of Buildings. Yeah. What are you going to do? I was like, oh, OK. And then, then it's just been fast forward since then. Yeah, it's no. definitely. Yeah, and I was really excited when you first started to take that leap because I know I recognize the fact that you're the first African American female ever at the Javits, which is huge at the time. Because I remember we was we was talking about it a lot because when I started Black Girl Everything, that was a big deal when you was a foreman and you existed within that space, and especially another male dominated space completely, especially male dominated. Actually, a lot of white folk. It's not even necessarily a black male dominated space at all. Mm. Um, so you really stand out within that environment. So now that as an electrician, what are you finding as um, some of the challenges as you've had during the pandemic with your business? The, cha the challenges that I have just with dealing with construction in New York is the um, insurance, the insurance mm -hmm. that you're required to have and the cost, the cost of that. Like, mm -hmm. um, so not having the proper insurance for as far as general liability, umbrella or auto, well, um, sometimes it will prohibit you from even being able to bid on an opportunity. Yeah. And actually, I can announce this now. Um, with Siemens, Siemens had a, um, I guess, what did they call it? They had a grant. They had a grant that someone had, another, another person had said, you should apply this because they only give about nine a year, one per state with Siemens, but the Siemens mm -hmm. is a, a national company. And I'm like, what? Why am I applying for this? He's like, just apply. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, okay. So we're doing all these pre-qualifications, getting the pre qualifications as a, um, a woman minority business enterprise. Mm -hmm. I had most of the documents, but then when it came to the essay, I was like, oh my God, I can write an essay. Really? You know? Why do I want the money? I said, because insurance is expensive. We mean, why? You know? uh, yeah. <laughs> what do I want it? Of course, of course I want it. So, yeah. And I actually want. And I congratulations on that. I, yes. on. I was like, there was like, someone's going to call you and ask you what you're going to do with it. I said, I'm going to pay my insurance for the rest of the year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> take take one, one piece of my overhead out, out of, out yes. of, you know, out of the picture, you know, the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. No, I can understand. So it's Alicia, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Yay! I got it. Okay, so Alicia. <laughs> 
Yeah. Lisa, so yeah. what have you found during the pandemic has been some of this? Have you had major challenges during the last two years? Not really, because the housing industry just boomed. It just exploded yeah. even more. You know, um, I guess, you know, what? I take that back. The challenge, you know, as an investor, um, you know, we only buy between the months of November, because the holidays, of course, up until mm -hmm. about March. That's the only time I normally buy. But um, <laughs> this, you know, last year and the year before that, January, people, I'm, I'm competing with homeowners. You know, I normally didn't have to compete with homeowners during those time frames. And yeah. so I think that was the most challenging, like my, my, and even in the condo, like in Miami, you know, homes where people were overbidding, not necessarily the condos. The condos were super cheap all the time, mostly in, because, you know, the condo fee, most of the time people weren't buying condos, not, not yeah. homeowners, at least not in Miami. Mm -hmm. And so that changed, you know, and then it became more competitive um, because you had a lot of, uh, I think now you have a lot of companies that are using our strategy, like okay. the average investor, you know, and our strategy in getting property and renting now is uh, companies are using it. They're building freaking neighborhoods that is only for rent, not for mm -hmm. sale anymore, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, so I would say the pandemic um, changed the strategy a little bit and allowed more investors and slash companies to come in. So I'm, I'm, com I'm competing with, you know, folks like me versus homeowners. So yeah. that, that thing, that's been the, the most challenging thing. But the market, of course, and the value of homes are just going up. And the value yeah. and the rent, the rents are just going up. So that's a plus for me as far as, you know, income. You know, I, but yeah. I, I hate it for those that, you know, that are not homeowners because um, I feel like there's going to be a struggle and a huge hardship, especially to our community. Mm -hmm. as the rents rise, you know, because they feel like, oh, we're being paid more, right? And so um, that's leading to higher rents, which is unfortunate because basically in our community, we can't afford it. I'm just being honest, you know, a yeah. lot of folks, you know, the poverty line is, you know, is in our community is higher than other races, right? Mm -hmm. And so... And so, yeah, I'm, I'm saddened by that part because I know it's coming. It, it's here, but it hasn't, it hasn't capped out. And that's the part that I'm afraid of as we continue 2022. Yeah, no, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Because, you know, as an educator, I deal with a lot of families. And, and even in the evenings with my adult program, I deal with a program that we have a transitional housing situation where mm -hmm. I'm helping them get jobs, but they're getting jobs at $16, $17 an hour where are they going to live at? <laughs> because they can't afford to even get out of the 90-day shelter and go to a one-bedroom that's running now $1,800. Right. Their paycheck right. doesn't even equal that. It would make it right. $1,600 right. an hour. So right. that exactly. is the stipulation. But yeah, it's great. These numbers are going up. We're making more money, but the rent yeah. is going up far, much far it's ridiculous. than what we're actually right. making for a lot right. of people. And it's better, it's better to own. Because I, I, I wouldn't even rent at these. I mean, the renters are really paying more than homeowners. Like a Definitely. mortgage. Yeah, the, you, can, you can qualify for a mortgage for the amount of rent that you're paying. You know, so my goal is to educate people. You know, I'm really, I've been really in the trenches of um, rehabbing homes and um, cash flow and renting them out. But now I'm like transitioning into educating people, like how to get these loans and how to, you know, transition from a renter to a homeowner because that's yeah. more important and teaching folks how to do that than to teach folks how to um get their first investment property right like yeah. get your ho first home first and then next get that investment property so you know my goal is for people to buy their investment property but in order to do that you first have to have your first home no i agree I agree wholeheartedly. I agree wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. So where are some of the places that you see your business going in the future? So I know, you, uh, Alicia, you've expressed that you're interested in more of your community service advocacy, right? And actually building back up your communities. That's just definitely great. So, Brunette, what are some of the things that you have a goal for where you want to transition your business into doing? Um, actually, what my, my business, what I want to transition my business is, 
I mean, I, I do mostly commercial and, and like private and private work. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like to, you know, do some work in the school, so school collection authority, stuff like that. But also, but just within, you know, just thinking about it, just within my union, just within my union and other women that look like me, you know, people that look like me, like, you know, there's no handbook, you know, there's no handbook. So it's kind of like you, you, you just go through it by yourself most of the time trying to get through one application to another application to like, to est, you know, to estimate, you know, I'm an electrician, I'm not an estimator, but I, you know, I can work a job and evaluate it with my estimator, you know, on a more cost effective way, you know, to bid the mm -hmm. job, to possibly win the job. I said, but with my community, um, the electricians, you know, we, you know, from the worker to uh, the owner, there's that, that huge gap in, 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 in general that mm -hmm. they don't, no one knows about, you know? I'm finding it out as I go, you know? And gratefully, if I had a lot of people around me, you know, that, were, that are either owners or they know people and, you know, they're sharing the information with me, you know, readily, because it's like, it's a very male dominated field, like you said, and just even being a woman in construction can, you know, has its own struggles. Never mind being on. It's one thing to never have a seat at the table, and then now you have a seat at the table, and you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, no, that's you know? really interesting. That's really interesting because there's still this this gap within where you're I doing. Feel, I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm an apprentice all over again. Ah, I feel like I'm starting all over. Well, like I think I'm a lot of people who own businesses when you take that leap to ownership it is a big leap. Right. And there's this level of fear because we're comfortable in our jobs. There's somebody there who's kind of going to tell us what to do, but not kind of tell us what to do. But then when you come out, I'm going to own this. It's a whole different world. Right. So, Lisa, can you understand what I'm saying about that? So how did you feel when you first started your business? Did you take that leap and say, this is what I'm going to do? And what did that look like for you? You're muted. My bad. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, uh, you know, it was, it was, I guess it was a little different for me because, um, I was very passionate about real estate. Like I love real estate. So, um, I, I, I tell you that back. Um, being passionate and starting your business are two different things, right? Yep. Um, um, I think starting my business was a necessity in this field. Um, I had to incorporate, I had to get a business to, uh, to protect myself, right? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't start off as a business. I started by buying properties under my name, right? Um, mm -hmm. But then as you, you go further, you learn that that's a huge risk and you can lose it all over something crazy, right? Yeah. And so um, then I got my corporation based off that. Um, I think when it came to, when it comes down to like the actual business and wanting to educate others and help others, um, I, I think that, that that was more of a, a, a cause or um, I think that came from within seeing my people struggle. Like, I hate that. I, I hate, I hate that um, our, our wealth, it, our Black community, African Americans, we have the lowest net worth of everyone of every race in America. I hate that, and it's mainly because we're not owners of anything, right? We don't yeah. own anything. We rent and we lease things, and we buy th things that are not assets; they're liabilities. So, um, I think that's what started me wanting to like grow my business more because mm -hmm. I feel like we need it. We, we in order for our community to uh, grow in, in this nation in America in this nation to with our with wealth we need to own things and we need to buy more property so I think that's what really helped me like focus and say you know what let's let's move my let's move do this next so let's do that next next to help my help the business grow to help the community grow that's so admirable I love that oh my gosh no I'm <laughs> wondering where do I sign up <laughs> Basically, we're about to start a whole class up here in New York. Like, like, where, where do I sign? Like, what you say? 
You said what? Said what? Said what? <laughs> said what? When can I come? When can I attend? Because it's one of the things. It's one of the things I was selling. Um, uh, I was talking to a friend, and they were telling me that they were like, "Oh, that their child had just bought a car, and they were so excited." And I was asking, "Say, hey, you know, what kind of car was it?" You know, and they didn't know, you know, because they themselves didn't own their own car, but they were just excited. And I'm, I'm asking, you know, all these questions like, you know, is it a used car, is it a new car, did you send a warranty, you know, did it finance it? You know, I'm asking all these like financial questions because these are things that I've learned over the years. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I could feel the uncomfortableness, you know, and I said, listen, you know, mm -hmm. we weren't taught these things, you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm only asking because, of the, the stumbles that I've made, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking questions that I've had to figure out for myself. So I'm just, you know, I said, I'm, I'm asking these questions because, you know, I wish I was there with her so I could help her, you know? You know, yeah. not make some of the mistakes that I made, you know, just, just with purchase in a car. You know, there's a lot of things they don't tell you. You like, Absolutely. sit alone with that. A lot of things they don't tell you, you know? It may Absolutely. be there, but they're not gonna tell you. They're not gonna tell you. Absolutely. You're right on it's that. Not, it's, not taught, on. it's not taught to us, period. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, it's not taught to it. Taught to the us no. No, you know? I agree. I agree with that wholeheartedly. You know, and that's what a lot of things where people ask me one of the things about with Black Girl, everything and everything that I do is just really about sharing the information and sharing the wealth so people can have a better understanding of what the reality of the world looks like. That's why I do teen nights where I have teenagers in my house and we do small little workshops. Yeah, we're going to have movie night. But we're going to do 20 minutes of a little workshop that women realize it's a workshop to help mm -hmm. educate them on something else, you know? They don't realize it's a workshop, right? No, no. <laughs> yeah, we're doing this whole yeah. thing, but they don't even realize what they're experiencing in the moment, but I know they're walking away with something. Because the only way that we're going to rebuild and save our communities is getting down and really working with our young people and giving them the skills and the assets to understand this information prior to being adults, prior to when they're on their own, prior to when they right. want to jump off the cliff and leave their parents' house because they want to be adults and they want to come back like we all do because being adulting is hard. Right. So we want to make sure we provide these opportunities for, for these young folks because we don't know and our people don't know. You know, they, yeah. they're just so limited on access to information. And some of the information you, you ask some questions like, well, you don't know that? Like, what do you mean? You didn't know that. Right. You didn't know that your bank is going to charge you this. You didn't know that that bank does this and the bank doesn't do that. Are you not researching where you get your accounts from? Exactly. You know, and it's just, right. it's just like, no, there's no. no but, you know, but when you, when you grow up, uh, I can say, like, for me, when I was growing up, it was maybe one or two people in my family that even had a car. You know what I mean? So, like, mm -hmm. never mind bank accounts, never mind credit cards or whatever. So, you know, you can't teach, you can't teach, they couldn't teach me something that they had no experience or no knowledge of. Agreed. Yeah. You know so, I, mean? I would say this is the most educated um, um, generation. Like, mm -hmm. YouTube is available for everyone the things that you need to learn and want to learn is accessible via your phone right so our, our generation or my generation so i turned 50 this year so i say my generation we didn't have this knowledge fed to us at all we had to we had to know somebody that had that had this information mm -hmm. nowadays it, these kids can look it up and figure it out on their own, which a lot of them are, which is it was which is great. I applaud them. But a lot of, uh, uh, especially in my generation, um, if it's not told to you by somebody that's done it or or is at a certain level, then it's like questionable. Is that did you really do that? Did you really? Uh, how do I know what you're saying is actually true that I can achieve what you what you what you say that I can do? How do I know that for sure? Because we we learn differently growing up. You know, we learn by sight. We saw somebody, they had it, they had the money, they proved it. Yes, I'm gonna listen to you, right? Um, but nowadays these kids they can figure out and find that out on YouTube and 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 make their own path, right? Mm -hmm. I, we didn't grow up with this knowledge. My my parent, my mom didn't teach me how to budget. My mom didn't t tell me about credit cards and good credit. What that meant, I just got the education of don't get a credit card. That's bad. 
you know, and, and, and which is, which is opposite, right? The best thing for you with property and getting a loan is for you to have credit cards, right? right? And then mm -hmm. show that you can use it responsibly, right? Yeah. So that's my, that's my first goal is the, you know, my first lesson to anybody is one, we're going to do a credit, credit report review with all three agencies and then see where you stand. That's the first part of anything. And then yeah. once we see where you stand, then the second part is, okay, this is what you need to do to raise your credit score because your credit score is key to everything in getting a loan, whether it's your investment property or whether it's your first home and getting a loan with a great interest rate. So mm -hmm. it's about educating everyone that you're around, but then also being, um, being open to so people feel comfortable talking to you because what she just said about, um, hey, I'm just asking, and she handled it with care. I'm so I'm glad you handled it with care. A lot of Black people don't want to talk about money. It is taboo. It is not a thing that you should be discussing. <laughs> and so with that, you have to handle credit repair. You have to handle your credit your credit score. You have to uh, uh, handle that with, uh, with uh, soft gloves, you know, because... Mm -hmm. People are um, rightfully so sensitive about that. It's the, that they're they're that. sensitive about it because they don't. It's not that they they're, don't want to know; it's that they don't know. You know, and it, maybe they feel yes. so that they should know, and it's not. You know, you know. A, it's a learned like, behavior. It's it's some it learned it's behavior. behavior. Yeah, yeah. My parents didn't talk about it. it. Was something that you didn't discuss? No, it was taboo. So we learned really? that hey, you don't talk about this. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Not at all. No, no. I, like I learned, you know, like mm -hmm. getting credit cards or whatever. I, you know, I learned you, 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 got, you got them, you stumble, you make mistakes or whatever. Then, then you, you know, you talk to people who are open to talk about it and then you figure it out. And I remember, you know, as being a journeyman, um, someone had started talking to me about it. And I was kind of like, like, I swear to God, I was, I said, that, I was like, they was like, what's your credit score? I was like, I don't know. And they was like, what do you mean you don't know? I'm like, I, I thought it was like, like your school record like you couldn't see it you know because like, it's something <laughs> that no one around me I'm like so I can see that like I saw it I just gotta write a letter so and then once I started doing that and then it was like okay this dispute everything you know because I'm like half the stuff I didn't know what it was you know right. and and just within a matter of like two months half of half of the stuff that was negative came off just because right. I had disputed it because I didn't know about the, the uh fair credit report act yep. that you know yeah i was like you know you have to dispute it with the credit bureau not with yep. the, the 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 debtor yeah. you know who the merchant, you, right not, mm -hmm. not with the merchant because mm -hmm. you know when you dispute it with the credit bureau they then have to contact them and they have 30 days to answer and if they don't answer exactly. then it, it's gone and then right. it right. Right. doesn't mean it can't come back but but hey it's gone it's gone i was i said i have a printer what am I, I'm just going to type everything in and send it out and see what comes back. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we, so one of the other things I want to talk to you guys again about is, you know, you both talked about being within male-dominated fields and everything else like that. So for young girls, because we really want to change the outlook of Black women living live within our strength and our power because we are the center of the universe. Clearly, it's my rules and that's what we are. Um what would you say to other young girls who are aspiring to go into career fields that are usually male dominated? So mm -hmm. I would say, oh, go ahead. No, me, I think for me, especially like I went from being a bank teller to construction, you know, and even my family, it was always called Miss Prissy and they could never see me actually doing it. And I was like, you know, I saw the dollar signs, you know, <laughs> I saw the dollar signs. It's like, actually, I was like a bank teller and it was for my review and it's like, oh, you're great. You just said, and they gave me 25 cents. And I was like, are you serious? Really? You know, and then I knew what my, you know, my father was making and my, uh, you know, my father was making. And I was like, you know what? So I can go through this apprenticeship in five years and come on the other end with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that makes more sense to me, you know, without the, without the, you know, without the um, student loan debt, mm -hmm. you know, and not to say that it's not difficult, you know, being in a male dominated field, but you still have to, no matter what, ha handle yourself as a young lady, you know what I mean? Because they'll all act like they want to be your friend, 
you know, but you still have to handle yourself with respect, even though it's a construction job, you know, yeah. but it's, it's very, it's very doable, you know, but you got to commit to it. You got to commit to it and just, you know, maintain your integrity and go to work, learn your craft. My father told me, you know, when I, which they, they really didn't want me to do it because, you know, I'm his baby girl. He didn't want me to do it. And he knew how the guys could do a job, you know, so he didn't want me to do it. And when I said I was going to do it anyway, and I went through the whole process anyway, and I did it. And he said, the only thing I ever want to say about you is that you're a good electrician. Not that she's a good electrician, that you're a good electrician. Exactly. Exactly. So Alicia, what is your, what is your perspective? Um, so my background is, is military. I did 22 years in the Air Force. Um, so being around majority really male fancy. people. I'm, I'm sorry? I said you're really fancy. I'm just saying that. I'm not, <laughs> so, so my point is, like, I've been around, like, uh, situations where um, it's only been two women and, let's say, 98 men, you know? Yeah. Um, so... Um, my advice to young women wanting to, to do this industry is like give zero fucks, excuse my language. Like mm -hmm. do what you want to do, write your own path uh, uh, and, and um, get a mentor, somebody that's already in the field, you know, um, so that they can help you, help guide you through the ways that you will have to go through with the, the BS of men in their mouth. You know, it's, it, it, there, it's just going to happen. And, um, you know, with her father being in the business, uh, I, I think that really helped her. I think being around, um, being in the military helped me transition into this because um, you, you, you know how to respond. To, mm -hmm. to men when they when they say things sideways to you, right? And, uh, and when they challenge you, you will get mm -hmm. challenged more. Um, by men just because you are a woman in a woman in this career field, right? They automatically think you don't know more than them, right? Automatically you have to to prove yourself. And and it's it just it time is. and time again. Time and time right. again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> until like, you know, and when you meet somebody new, you know you gotta go through this like, mm, let me just give you the quick spill, sir. Cause um this is <laughs> like I know what I'm doing. I've been in this business for blah blah blah. And then they're like, oh, oh, you look very young for your age. You know, as black women, we're going to get that, right? And all so the time. Like, oh, all, all the time, right? I said, yeah, mm -hmm. but my experience is, 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 it is what it is, right? So, you know, but even, even with that experience, some, even with that, just the experience, you know, I mean, like for me, as, you know, I've started going through my career just with dealing with the men, you know, like they'll give you an assignment or they give you the blueprints, you know, they want to try to explain to you. I'm like, I know how to read blueprints. You don't have to, you can give them to me and you, you, you can yeah. go, I'm good, thank you. You know, yeah. if I have a question, right. I'll come find you, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. but also, yeah. but just dealing with the egos, you know, like I was on the job and they gave me the print and I'm following the print and then I saw something that I knew was wrong. You know what I mean? But I'm dealing with somebody who's been doing this for 30 some odd years or whatever. And, you know, I'm like, can you look at this for me? You know, I already knew the answer. I just wanted them to see it. And, mm -hmm. I, and he made the face and I said, oh, so you see what I saw. I said, the good yeah. news is I know how to fix it. <laughs> and his face still didn't change. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, the problem is that we're on the eighth floor and you're the first person who brought this up. I was like, don't, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? You know, and I transitioned from that to becoming a supervisor. You know, if, within that company, and then transitions from that to running my own job. You know, which yeah. I was like, okay, you know, that I really didn't think would be possible, but you know, someone gave me an opportunity. That didn't yeah, look and like opportunities me. are definitely out there, and it's just about. I just want our our youth to understand that they can take a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of experience, and a little bit of power, and make something of themselves, which you both have actually accomplished by making something of yourself, taking your passion, taking your dreams, and just being bigger than what, um, there's not going to be somebody's going to be. You could be in a little real estate office, working for somebody, taking people to see little houses, getting little bits of commission. You could be doing that. You could still be a simple electrician, waiting for the foreman to tell you what to do, but that's not the choice that you made. The choice you made, you like, I'm going to be a boss. And it is what it is. And people are going to respect me for that. And I appreciate you both 
for stepping out on your own and being that powerful and also sharing the space with me in this world to be able to share that energy with others who are looking to want to do that but are waiting for somebody to tell them that they can't you know because we all tend to sometimes sit back so one of the things i want to talk about i want to also thank on facebook and my youtube channel because it goes on my youtube channel to alicia for sponsoring the black girl everything retreat yeah Yay. <laughs> okay, so her sponsorship is very important because she hit me up on some, hey, I just want to sponsor a sister to be able to be there. And that's why this was called Celebrating Sisterhood. You yeah. guys see that? All right, perfect. <laughs> so we, after consideration of all the people within my network and for what I know you obtain from the retreat in regards to growth of your business and wellness and mental health and just that power that everybody needs. That's why we selected you, Ms. Bronette Cook, to receive this sponsorship. <laughs> yes. So say thank you to Alicia. She, uh, you're, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh, okay, thank, you so <laughs> thank you so much. It's, it's, it's very much appreciated. And, and Gloria knows, if, you know, that I need it. You know, just that. You know, that, just starting off, so that constant support, that sisterhood, you know, to not feel like alone, you know, just with this whole entrepreneurship. Yeah, absolutely. And it's easy to, to doubt yourself, especially mm -hmm. in, in a male-dominated field. So, no, kudos to you. Thank you for selecting her. I, I um... You know, I feel blessed. I have the opportunity to to um, pay it forward, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we 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 don't know where we are gonna where we're gonna be in two years from now. And I just want to be a blessing to someone, and then someone pass that down to the next generation. So, um, yeah, and I will, and I'll be in the position to be a blessing to someone very soon. Absolutely. <laughs> and kudos to you for being in this business for so long. Like, I don't think people realize how long, how much it takes for someone to be in this business and that field for so long. So kudos yeah. to you. And don't, and don't stop what you're doing, okay? I don't know. I don't, I don't know about reverse. All I know is going just keep moving forward one day at a time, yeah. one step at a time, one obstacle at a time. And just keep moving forward. Yeah. So I, wanna, I just want to thank you both for coming on tonight. This has been a great conversation. Hopefully. I know that people are out there watching. People are going to continue to watch this and be inspired by both of you. And I think you're both great. You're both amazing. I'm just really excited <laughs> as I kick this off <laughs> for Black Women. Well, I say Black Women History Month, but it's actually Women's History Month. But, you know, again, Black Women, you are center of the universe. All right. So thank you all for sharing your time with me this evening. And I appreciate you and love you, by the way. Like, seriously, love you. And I mean that. I'm just thank not saying to say that. You Thank you. Good. Love you too, Glow. And I can't wait for you to see because I am going to be picking your brain apart, Miss Alicia. I'm going to be uh, picking, I'm <laughs> unfortunately, picking your I won't, unfortunately, I won't be there. That's why I gifted it to you. And so I really? <laughs> don't do it. Well, I, so I want to say I apologize for not being in the right setting. I was going from one place to the next. So I appreciate you guys being um, understanding because I am in a car right now doing yeah, I know this. <laughs> doing, <laughs> Listen, but I go no, live I from my car all the time. And I say, uh, oh, I'm here really? live from oh, my car. Listen. Okay. Yeah. Thank but God for the virtual backgrounds. <laughs> feel free. <laughs> That's true. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. You know, you have my, oh, no, my contact information. And yes. yeah, definitely. definitely. Because that's something yeah. that I've oh, um, oh, um, been wanting to do as far as an, an investment property, you know, and I have an area that I've already like kind of targeted and kind of have, yeah. have my reasoning behind it. And even, yes. uh, even like my, my sister had uh, bought, um, during COVID bought a property in Florida, and you know, she's like, I'm practicing for my retirement. I said, but you're not retired yet, so what are you doing when it's not there, you know? Exactly. So she, she she hooked up with some evolve or something, you know, so that when she's not there, I'm like, it's, it's paying for herself, and, you know, like, she was kicking and screaming the whole time, you know, when I'm telling her, like, you know, I'm writing down the numbers. I'm like, I'm writing down the numbers. Like, you see these numbers. Like, how are you paying for this? Like, you need to do this, and, you know, and she did it, and she's like, oh, thank God. You know that she did it. You know she was like, "This actually exactly. worked." You know, 
Because sometimes yeah. we all have to take step out on faith. You know, and we have that level of fear behind us when we stop, when we just don't. So before I leave, before we um, cut off today, so you guys can kind of share where people can find you, how to get in contact with you. Yes, for me, um, my company, my website is evanselectricalservices.org. So actually, and um, you can contact, there's a contact uh, portion there that it'll co come right to my email. You know, if you have any questions, need any kind of information or know a project that's possibly coming up that you might want me to work, work on or bid on, you know, that's how that works. Thank you. Okay. Lisa, how can people find you? Yeah, so city is S I D I dot group dot realty. Um, if you can hit me up on IG, send me a DM, and I'll I'll hit you back. Um, any anybody wanting to get their first investment property or even their their first home, you know, hit mm -hmm. me up. I'll help you out. But we really specialize in investment properties, and that's across the U.S. East Coast, West Coast. I'm in the DMV area. I actually reside in Washington D.C. So if you're local, I'll meet you face to face. That is so beautiful. I'm so excited. I'm just so excited about all of you. So, so if people want to find you, they can find your information. It's going to be on my YouTube channel, Black Girl Everything LLC. And then you guys will also be listed on my page as my first interview, as a profile interview for this month, hey. because Women's History oh. Month. So it'll be on my website, www.blackgirlevethinglc.com. And I by the way, definitely. people also can go there and buy my book because it drops today too. Oh, um, awesome. Awesome. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Yep, so I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you all. All right, so you guys have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your day and continue being great. Thank you for the interview. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice meeting you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.